Hey Flight Test friends, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build the all new Flight Test Mighty Mini F6F. I am really excited about this build. This is the first time that we will be introducing symbol mapping to a Flight Test Mighty Mini. The new Flight Test Mighty Mini aircraft are the perfect stepping stone between the classic Flight Test aircraft and the Master Series aircraft. Symbol mapping is the laser etching of parts on the underside. This gives the builder instructions on how to prepare and how to attach different parts together. Once the builder has had a chance to understand what the markings mean, you will no longer need build videos the way you have in the past. One thing that needs to be pointed out, instead of having one dedicated video, now we will be using a playlist. One of the big advantages of having a playlist is that if we need to add additional instructions to the build, we can always add another video to the segment. Make sure and check out each video in the playlist before beginning assembly of your aircraft. Well, I've got a huge pile of parts. What do you say we get started? If you look on my table, it looks like I've got quite a mess. I have pulled all of the parts out of the scrap and I've put them on my tabletop and I've got all my labels facing where I can read them. Before we get started, I want to get all the parts grouped together. As a whole, when I look at everything, I see all these symbols and I'm not really sure what I need to do first. Let's begin by grouping all the parts together that have the same symbol. Let's begin by gathering up all the parts that have this stack symbol on it. All right, once we've got all those parts grouped together, let's group all the parts together that have the peel paper symbol on it. Now that we've got all our parts grouped together, Let's take a couple minutes and talk about the stack symbol. I want to talk about what it means to stack parts together. Let's take a look at this one first. You'll see here that I've got two groups of markings. We have F2A and F2B. Since there are two markings on here, that means that this stack is going to be two layers thick. You'll notice that F2A has an underline. The underline is in the first position here. That means that it will be the part that is on top. If we look at our second part, you'll notice that the underline is under the second marking. So the two parts will fit together like this. If we look at our second example, you'll see that we have one, two, three, four sets of markings. That means this particular stack will be four layers thick. We see that G1 is underlined. That tells us that this part will be on top. G2 will be underneath. So if we look here, G2, that'll be underlined. Now we need to find G3. And we find G3, and the underline is in the third position. And then here we have G4 underlined. That'll be in the fourth position. There is one thing that I'd like to point out. Anytime you see the letter M after the stack symbol, that means that the part is going to be mirrored. We're going to flip it upside down whenever we glue it together. So that's how that stack will look once it's been glued together. I'm gonna set this stack off to the side and look at the next example. In this example, we see that we've got F4A, it's gonna be the top part, and underneath it will be F4B. See here we've got F4B, and these two parts will come together. Now you'll notice that I've got a no glue symbol right there. We wanna make sure that we do not add glue between the dotted lines when we glue the two parts together. Also, you're going to see a razor blade symbol cutting a dotted line. We'll get to that a little bit later. In our next example, we see that we've got three sets of markings. Two of them are marked F3A, and then the last one is F3B. This one has an underline in the first position. 
This is the second position, and then this is on the bottom. All right, that looks good. And here we've got an XM, we've got an F1A, and an F1B. We see that the F1A goes on top of the F1B, and now we just need to locate the part labeled XM. XM is always going to be one of our X mounts, and so that's going to get glued here on top. Now that we've got all of our parts in stacks, let's get everything glued together. Let's begin by gluing our F2 former together. The F2 former consists of a former marked with an F2A and an F2B. Let's glue together our next one. I want to make sure that I do not apply glue between the dotted lines. Let's glue our next one together. You always want to check that your crop marks top and bottom are lined up when gluing your parts together. Before we glue our last part on, I want you to take a look that we need to make sure that glue does not end up between the dotted lines. This piece right here is going to be torn away. I'm going to leave it in place for the time being. We'll do that a little bit later. I'm going to flip my part over. I'm going to apply glue up here. I'm going to keep it away from the dotted line. I'm not going to apply glue to the tear away. Now that we've got all our stacks glued together, let's set them off to the side. Let's take a look at our next symbol. Now that we have our stacks done, let's take a look at the pile of parts that have the peel paper symbol. Anytime you see the peel paper symbol, we are simply going to peel the paper away. One advantage of laser etching our parts is that even when we peel the paper away, you are still able to read all of the symbols etched into the foam. If you look at my wing assembly here, you'll notice that I've got a peel paper symbol over here, but I do not have it over here on this side. Anytime you run into that, you will only be peeling paper from the area indicated. If your parts fall out of the canopy section, that's no big deal. Even though I don't have markings down the middle, I am going to tear the paper away between these scores. Now that we've got all the paper torn away, let's take a look at our next symbol. Now that we've peeled away the paper from all of the parts, let's go through our kit once again and locate all the parts 
with the remove foam symbol. Once we've got all the parts gathered up, we're simply going to go through and remove foam wherever indicated. To remove foam along a score, I always like to take the back side of my razor blade and run it down the score. Once I do that, I can simply peel away the foam. To remove foam from a channel, I'm simply going to break it over and peel it away. Hopefully by now, you will really start to see how symbol mapping can really help speed up the building process. You can see here that I've got my vertical stabilizer still on my piece of scrap. I've got the instructions to remove foam off the part itself. There was nowhere on the part itself that I could hide that, so I made a big rectangular cutout. Now that we know we're going to be removing foam from this channel, I'm going to go ahead and remove the vertical stabilizer from the scrap. Now that we've removed all the foam wherever indicated, let's go on to our next symbol. Now that we've got the foam removed from all of our parts, let's go through our pile one last time and locate all of the parts with this symbol right here. This is the bevel symbol, and you'll notice on this part I've got a bevel start and I've got a bevel stop over here at the other end. Go ahead and gather up your parts and let's make a big pile. Now that we've got all of our parts with the bevel label, let's create our first bevel. We're going to begin by adding our first bevel to an aileron. Using the back side of my razor blade, I'm going to first run it down the score. Next, I'm going to fold my aileron backwards. I'm going to hold my blade at a 45 degree angle to the table, and then I'm going to sweep it in the direction I'm going to drag the razor blade at about a 45 degree angle. Next, I'm going to draw it across and cut about a 45 degree bevel. All right, once I do that, flip it over. And if this is broken free, you're fine. If not, you can use the back side of a razor blade and run down the score first. I'm gonna begin a score right here where I see the bevel start symbol, and I'm gonna end it at the bevel stop symbol. Do the same on this side. Now we're simply going to go through our stack of parts and add bevels anywhere it's indicated.
Now that we've got all of our bevels cut, let's add a little bit of strength to our ailerons and our elevator. To reinforce our aileron and elevator hinges, I'm going to run a small bead of glue right down the seam. Next, I'm going to take a piece of scrap and wipe away all of the excess glue. I'm going to hold my elevator in the full open position for about 30 seconds while the glue has a chance to cool down. Once that's done, I'm going to do the same thing on each of the ailerons. Now that we have all of our parts prepped, it's finally time to start building. Let's begin by working on our vertical stabilizer. To do the vertical stabilizer, I'm going to take a barbecue skewer and fit it right inside of the channel we created when we removed the foam. And you can see that I've got it pushed all the way up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the rudder up. I'm going to be applying a bead of glue on the flat edge, not the edge where we did a bevel. Next, I'm going to drop my barbecue skewer down in the glue. And I want to make sure that my rudder remains free. As the glue is cooling down, I'm going to run a bead of glue right here along the seam. And once I run that bead of glue along the seam, I'm going to remove all the excess glue using a piece of scrap. Leave the rudder in the full open position while the glue has a chance to cool down. To finish out the horizontal stabilizer, I'm going to run a bead of glue along one of the leading edges. Once I run a bead of glue, I'm going to rotate it straight up and hold it in place while the glue cools down. You just need to hold it in place for a few seconds. And then we're going to run a second bead of glue right in the middle Once we've applied glue, we're going to fold it flat onto the tabletop and we're slowly going to drag it across the tabletop. By dragging it across the tabletop, this will prevent the horizontal stabilizer from being glued to your table. Now that this side is done, do the same thing on the other side. Now that our horizontal stabilizer is done, let's move on to the main wing assembly. To build the main wing assembly, I'm first going to lay out the four components that make up the wing. To add shape to the wing, I'm going to take the exposed foam and lay it on top of the table. We're only going to be adding shape from the leading edge of the wing to about two-thirds of the way back. In order to add shape, I'm simply going to apply pressure with my right hand and I'm going to pull the part off the table with my left hand. I'm keeping my right hand very flat. You can see how after drawing it over the table a couple times, we've added an airfoil. Now I'm going to move my hand over just slightly and add shape a little further out on the wing. I'm going to continue to move my right hand over each time I draw it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin drawing it from about the mid-wing position. When adding shape, we are only adding shape to the portion of the wing where the paper has been removed. You can see that my airfoil is sticking up approximately three quarters of an inch. Let's do the same thing on the other three parts. Let's begin by gluing our two center sections together. I'm simply going to bring the two edges together. Those look good. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue 
to each of these edges. Bring my edges back together. I'm going to hold the assembly off the top of the table. I want to make sure it doesn't get stuck. Once I've got my two center pieces glued together, let's bring these two edges together. I want to make sure that I've got it lined up here at the back and up here at the score. All right, the test fit looks good. I'm first going to apply a bead of glue where the paper tab meets the foam. Then I'm going to run a second bead of glue closer to the edge. I don't want to get too close to the edge, otherwise we'll be getting glue squirting out on the bottom. You can see that I'm moving the assembly just a little bit to ensure that it doesn't stick to the table. Hold this in place for a full minute and a half while the glue cools down. Once that's done, let's do the same thing on the other side. Once it's had a chance to cool down, we're going to install our electronics housing. Before we do a test fit with our electronics box, we need to cut some material away. If you look right here, this is our cut symbol. Anytime you see the cut symbol, there will be some assembly required before cutting the material away. Now that we've got the box glued together, using a razor blade, I'm going to play connect the dots. Since we were careful not to apply glue between the dotted lines, this piece should easily pop out. With that removed, we can go ahead and tear away our instruction tab. Once that's been done, we're going to flip the assembly upside down and lay it on top of our wing assembly. I want to make sure that it's centered here in the front and also in the back. I'm going to flip it around backwards. You'll see that the box is flush with the trailing edge of the wing. Once I'm happy with my test fit, I'm going to apply glue to the bottom of the box. And we're going to glue it in place. Let's hold this in place for about a minute and a half while the glue has a chance to cool. Now that the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to slide our wooden spar in place. The wooden spar is going to slide through the slot we just created when we cut the foam away. If we look at our spar, you can see that it's flat from here all the way across to here. We want to make sure that the spar is centered left to right. Once it's been centered, we're simply going to apply a bead of glue along the leading edge. Once we apply glue, I'm going to hold it in place. I want to make sure and give this a full two minutes to cool down before going on to the next step. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to grab the spar with my right hand and I'm going to push the other side down with my left hand until the spar makes contact with the lower wing skin. And I'm going to check to make sure that that looks good. And I'm going to add a bead of glue on the leading edge side of the spar. I'm going to lift it back up with my right hand and push down with my left hand. I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to install our foam spars. You'll notice that the side where we remove the paper is going to be up. I'm going to push it up against the box and up against the wooden spar, and it'll come all the way out to the edge. Notice that there's a knockout where a servo is going to go. Next, I'm going to apply a heavy bead of glue. I'm also going to apply a bead of glue along the back side of the wooden spar, and I'm going to position my foam spar in place. I want to hold this for a full two minutes. Once that cools down, do the same thing on the other side. Now 
Now that we've got our foam spars installed, let's work on our servos. When doing a servo install, I always like to take the four-way servo arm and I like to cut it down to make a single servo arm. The reason I do this is that if you look how thick the four-way is compared to the single, it's always good to get a little bit more strength whenever we can. I'm simply going to cut three of the four arms off. Once that's done, I'm going to install it onto my servo. We're going to be installing servo arms on two servos at this time. Once you get your servo arms installed, double check that you have one servo arm pointing one way and one servo arm pointing the other way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set this servo off to the side and I'm going to drop this servo in. I want to make sure that one of my arms is sticking straight down. Once I've double checked that, I'm going to manually rotate my servo arm straight back. Then I'm going to push my wing tip all the way down to where it's flush on the tabletop. And I'm going to push my servo in where it's flush on the tabletop. I'm going to hold it in position and apply a bead of glue around the servo where it meets the lower wing skin. I'm going to let this cool down for a full two and a half minutes. I want to make sure this servo doesn't go anywhere. Once that's done, repeat the same process on the other side. Once the servos have been glued in place, let's install our Y extension. Make sure your colors are lined up correctly. Once that's done, be sure and tape your connections. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna stretch my wires tight and I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue near the electronics box. Do the same on the other side. Once that's done, we're going to fold our first wing tip back. And when I fold it back, I want to make sure this edge is right on this seam. Okay, my fit looks good. I'm going to apply a heavy bead of glue right down this seam and along the top of this spar. Again, I'm making sure that that edge is lined up to the seam. I'm going to hold this in place for a full two and a half minutes while the glue cools. Once that's been glued in place, we're going to fold our center section over. I notice that I've got a little bit of a break right here. That shouldn't have done that, but sometimes that happens. In order to fix that, I'm simply going to fill that with glue. And I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to hold it in such a way that you can just barely see that line across there. I'm going to give that a minute or so to cool down and then we're going to try our test fit again. So to do our test fit, we first want to make sure that everything lines up from here up to about here. You might have to make a little bit of a bend and adjustment to get everything to line up exactly right. I'm going to fold it over. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to pull it forward just slightly until it's riding in this cutout. Next, I'm going to continue to work the wing in until it drops in place. And I'm happy with my seam. That looks good. Looks like I'm going to have to lift it up just a little bit in the back. So I'll be ready for that once I add glue. I think everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is just like before, I'm going to add a bead of glue here, here, but then I'm also going to add a bead of glue right along this corner. Since I've got a paper tab, the glue is on top of the wing just a little bit. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to pull my wire forward, gently fold that back, drop it in place, and I'm very carefully going to apply pressure to where my seam looks really good. Also making sure that the wing is making contact with the foam spar below. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to lay my hand across it. Even steady pressure. I want to make sure I'm not creating any wrinkles. And I'm going to hold that for a couple minutes while the glue cools. Once that's done, we're going to do the same process on the other side. Just like we did on the other side, we're going to fold our wing end all the way back. And I want to make sure that we're lined up with the seam. Looks good. Apply a bead of glue, another bead of glue. Be sure and allow plenty of time for the glue to cool before doing the next section. When I fold it back, it's a little bit too tight right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up, give it a little bit more shape. There we go, that, that lines up a lot better now. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to add a very heavy bead of glue where the electronics box meets the upper wing skin. Make sure and apply even pressure to the trailing edge of the wings. The upper wing skins have not been glued to the lower wing skins yet. For the elevator and rudder servo, I did the same thing that I did on the ailerons. I cut down a four-way servo arm and made them into a singles. You can see also that one is facing one way and one is facing the other. I'm going to hold the two servos together and I'm going to first feed the wires through the hole towards the leading edge of the wing. Once I've got my wires pulled through, I'm going to drop the two servos together into the hole. You'll notice that my servo gears are closest to the trailing edge of the wing. Once I'm happy with my fit, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue here at the front. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to glue the bottoms of the servos in. While the glue's cooling down, I'm going to gather up my wires. I've got the two wires from the servos I just installed. I've also got the wire to my ailerons. I'm going to drop them into this hole right on top of the electronics box. As the glue's cooling down, you can set the assembly off to the side. Let's begin working on our fuselage. Before we get started assembling the fuselage, there's a couple things that I want to point out. Let's take a look at the numbers and how they're laid out. If you look over here, you'll see C4. If you look over here, C3, C2, and C1. Anytime that we're putting an assembly together, all of the numbers will be on one side or the other. So if you have your parts laid out and you happen to lay it out like this, you can quickly see that there's something wrong here. We've got a number here, here, and here. This number is on the wrong side. All we got to do is flip it around. Always double check that all of your numbers are on the same side. One more thing that I want to point out on the tail section is we see that we've got a cut symbol here and we've got a cut symbol here. If you remember, Anytime you see a cut symbol, there's going to be some assembly required before we make the cut. If we look down here on our skin mark C3, we see the same thing on either side. Now that we've covered all the markings, let's get a game plan and add some shape to the tail section. In order to get the correct shape for our aircraft, it's vital that we add shape in the correct areas. If you look down the middle, you're going to see five parallel scores. These scores are there to help you add a very, very sharp edge along the top of the aircraft. 
the areas we're going to be focusing on are going to be roughly in here. So if you have a permanent magic marker, you can kind of draw this rough shape. It does not have to be exact, but it does help us concentrate our efforts in the correct area. Now that we've identified the two areas we're going to add shape to, let's begin adding shape. We're going to begin by adding shape to this area right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the bottom line to the edge of the table, and I'm simply going to apply pressure in the area where we're needing shape. All right, once I've done that side, I'll do the other. Again, I'm gonna line up the bottom line to the edge of the table and add some shape. Now that I've done that, I'm also gonna add a little bit of shape right in here. Not very much, but I am gonna give it just a little bit of attention. Flip around, do the same on the other side. Once we've got our shape added, if you haven't already removed the scrap, go ahead and do that now. All right, once that's been done, we're gonna make a hard fold right down the middle. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to very, very gently bend this in half. I wanna be very careful that I'm not creating any wrinkles or creases. If you go really, really slow, the foam inside those scores will start to compress. And let's just hold it like this for a couple minutes. This will help the foam to break down. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a B fold here at the back. But instead of going a full 90 degrees, I'm gonna bring it back. We're gonna be gluing it at about a 60 degree angle. By gluing it at a 60 degree angle, that's gonna make the sides look a little bit fuller, not so flat. So once I'm happy with my test fit, I'm gonna apply a bead of glue from the tip of the tail about halfway up. We'll bring it back to about the 60 degree mark I'm gonna hold this in place for a full two and a half minutes. Once that's done, do the same thing on the other side. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're simply gonna bring our two edges together. I bring my two edges together. I want to make sure that they come together nicely on both ends. Looks like I've got a little bit of interference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a very small bevel over here on this side. I'm only going to go about halfway. Then I'll do the same on the other side. that's done I'll bring the edges together again yeah that looks really good now I'm gonna tear off several pieces of tape when I glue my two edges together I want to make sure things are lined up exactly right here on the end Add a bead of glue, five or six inches long. And when I bring my edges together, the side that does not have glue needs to shingle over the side that does have glue. We'll 
double check that my edges are lined up. Those look good. Anywhere the seam looks good, I'm going to add a piece of tape. Once that's done, I'm going to continue to apply glue and I'm going to go all the way back down to the end. If you have some glue get away from you, you can use a piece of scrap. I've got an area right here that needs a little bit of glue, but we're actually going to apply glue from the inside to finish that up. You can see that I've got an area about halfway down that needs some glue. I'm simply going to drip a little bit of glue down there and using a long piece of scrap, I'm going to use that to smear the glue where it needs to go. The next thing we need to do is we need to test fit the F4 former into the tail section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gently squeeze the top and bottom. You can see how that's going to widen things out just a little bit. I'm going to line up the crop mark in the center to the center of the skin. I'm going to push it up as high as it'll go. Looking at it from the side, we want to make sure that one layer of foam is sticking out. Next, I'm going to apply pressure right in line with the former. And it looks like that's going to come together really nicely. I need to make a little bit of adjustment. I'm a little bit off I need to clock it just a little differently. And I'm going to squeeze the edges back down. That looks really good. Now, when I squeeze the edges, if I get too far back into this area, you're going to create a crinkle. Make sure you're only squeezing right in line with the former. Instead of pulling the former out, I'm simply going to squirt some glue right inside of the opening on either side. I am going to have a piece of scrap on standby just in case the glue shoots out the front. I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes while the glue cools down. We really want to make sure this former is stuck to the skin. As the glue is cooling down, I'm going to shoot a little bit of glue behind the former where it meets the skin. Just like before, give that time to cool before moving on to the next step. Now that that's had a chance to cool down, we look at our symbol mapping and we see that we're going to need to be cutting away a section here and then a section right in the middle. Let's do that now. Once we have the material removed, let's do a test fit with our spline. To test fit our spline, I'm simply going to open up the cavity and we're going to slide it all the way in. You'll know it's all the way in when this edge is flush with the second former. Once we've got our test fit, we're going to pull it out. We're going to apply a bead of glue here on the top and a bead of glue on the bottom. Then we're going to reinsert it. As the glue is cooling down, we can run a bead of glue here and here. Give that a chance to cool down, and then we're going to install the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. To install the horizontal stabilizer, we first need to remove a little bit of material. If you notice right here, we've got some material hanging down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the tail assembly flat on the table. 
you can see that I'm holding my razor blade flat and parallel with the table. I'm simply going to go and remove the material that's hanging below the paper's edge. Once that material has been removed, I'm going to slide my tail into place. I want to make sure that it's visually centered. And once I'm happy with the fit, I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to put a small bead of glue where the horizontal stabilizer meets the skin. I'm not going to use excessive glue because we may have to make a little bit of adjustment once we get the main wing installed. I'm just adding enough glue to keep it tacked in place. Give the glue a full two minutes to cool down and then we're going to test fit our vertical stabilizer. To test fit our vertical stabilizer, locate the hole near the trailing edge of the tail. We're going to be running the barbecue skewer in our vertical stabilizer through that hole. We're going to push the entire assembly down until this little tab is captured inside the tail skin. If you look here at the front edge of the vertical stabilizer, you'll see that it'll be flush against the skin. We want to look at it from the top to make sure it's centered up. We also want to make sure that the rudder is free to rotate. If it's interfering, you can pull up just slightly and then test it again. We don't have any interference, so let's pull the tail section out. Once we pull the vertical stabilizer out, I'm going to apply a bead of glue right here. Next, I'm going to run my barbecue skewer back through the hole. And I'm very carefully going to drop it all the way down. Since I have glue on my vertical stabilizer, I want to make sure when it makes contact with the skin that it is exactly centered. Next, I want to adjust the tail, make sure it's not interfering. Okay, that looks good. And I'm checking visually from the top. It looks like I'm centered up really good. And I've got good clearance there. I'm going to hold this in place while the glue cools. Once the glue cools down, I'm going to secure it a little bit more by adding a bead of glue here and the same on the other side. As the glue's cooling down, using a pair of cutters, I'm going to cut off the excess barbecue skewer. I'll add a little drop of glue where it's coming out of the tail section. We'll let this cool down, and then we're going to begin the nose section. Now that the tail section is done, we're going to begin by working on the nose. Anytime we're adding shape to a part, it's always important to read the former. This one is going to be really easy because it's very round in shape. If it would be squared off or if it would be oblong, we would go about this a little bit differently. But since it's pretty much a round shape, we're just going to add an even amount of shape all the way across the part. Once we've added our shape, we're going to bring the two edges together. I'm going to add a bead of glue on one side. When I bring my two edges together, the side that does not have glue will be shingling over the side that does have glue. You'll notice that I'm going to bring the parts together at a little bit of an angle, and then I'm going to rotate them until they're flush. You'll notice that that'll shoot all the excess glue to the inside where it'll be hidden. While that's cooling down, I'm going to add a piece of tape across the seam. And then we're going to test fit our first former. To test fit our first former, we're going to grab the F2 former and we're going to slide it in the back. When I drop it in, I want to make sure that the crop mark is lined up to the crop mark on the skin. I also want to make sure that I've got one layer of foam sticking up all the way around. That looks really good. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to add a bead of glue here at the top and a bead of glue around the sides. I 
I'm double checking to make sure that I've got one layer of foam sticking up evenly all the way around. And I'm going to hold pressure, making sure that the skin is making contact with the former all the way around. Before we test fit our next former, we need to build up the power pod. You can see here, according to the symbol mapping, that this is going to be an A-fold. On an A-fold, the side plates go above the bottom plate. Once you've completed the power pod, if you take a look closely, you'll notice that one side is cut at a slight angle. This angled side will be feeding into this XM former. Let's do that now. You'll notice too that the bottom of the power pod will be open. We're gonna drop it in just like that. Once we're happy with our test fit, I'm gonna put a bead of glue around the inside and we're going to drop our power pod in place. Give that a full two minutes to cool and then we're going to test fit the XM former into our nose skin. Now that we've got our power pod glued in place, we're going to drop our XM former into the nose. I want to make sure as I'm dropping it in that the power pod is feeding through this second former. I'm going to push it in until we've only got about an eighth of an inch sticking out. What's really important at this stage is that the power pod is sticking out evenly all the way around. So it looks really good. I'm between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now when I spin things around, you'll notice that the XM former does not look flush at all. In fact, it's lining up to the edge pretty good here but you can see we've got a bunch of extra foam down here. The reason for that is we have built in some down thrust and some right hand thrust. This is critical if you want your aircraft to fly correctly. Once everything is in place, let's run a bead of glue between the power pod and the former. Let's also run a bead of glue between the XM mount and the skin. Give this a full two minutes to cool down before moving on. Before we connect the nose to the tail, let's go ahead and cut away a little bit of material. If you remember back, there's a cut symbol right inside here. Let's go ahead and play connect the dots. We're gonna connect this dot to this little bitty crop mark here on the edge. We'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. Once we've got our foam cut away, let's add some shape to the center section. You can see that I'm adding a little bit of extra shape in the middle. That'll be helpful in getting the skin to fit. Now that we've added some shape, let's line up the crop mark right in the center. We're going to push it right up against the former. I want to check to make sure my edges will come together. That looks really good. I'm going to add a bead of glue across the spline and I'm going to run a bead of glue about an inch along the top of the spine. Make sure I'm centered and I'm going to squeeze right in line with the former. I want to make sure that this skin is as far back as it can go. If you don't, you're going to have a little bit of a gap. Give this a full two and a half minutes to cool down. You do not want to let go before the glue's had a chance to cool down. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to make sure that my spline is centered to this crop mark. Once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to run a bead of glue down either side. I'm going to pinch that tight for a full two and a half minutes. While I'm waiting on the glue to cool, I'm also going to add a little bit of glue right here where the skin meets the former. That'll help keep things in place. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to run a bead of glue right along this former as high up as we can. I'm 
Next, I'm going to pinch this closed. And while the glue's cooling, I'm keeping an eye on that seam. I want to make sure everything stays together. Make sure and give the glue a full two and a half minutes to cool down. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to glue the nose in place. We're going to be lining up the crop mark on the nose to the crop mark here on this center section. All right, our fit looks really good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue right across the former. I want to make sure my crop mark is lined up. You can see that the part that had glue is shingling slightly under the part that does not have glue. That's a good trick for getting a good looking seam. Give that a full two and a half minutes to cool, then we're going to glue the sides. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to add a bead of glue where the former meets the skin. You'll notice that I'm not applying glue to the former where there's a notch. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Give that a full two and a half minutes to cool down. Once that's cooled down, let's shoot a heavy bead of glue between the spline and the former. Give that a chance to cool down, and then we'll finish gluing the skin in place. To finish gluing the skin in place, we only want to be applying glue from the tip of my fingernail to the edge. We want to make sure that I do not have any glue from this crop mark to this crop mark. We'll get to that in a little bit. Make sure you give your glue plenty of time to cool. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now that's had a chance to cool down, let's take a look at the inside of the skin. We see the cut symbol. So we've got the assembly done, so we're going to need to make a cut. I want to point out that right here we've got a score. We won't be cutting the score, so I'll we'll only be cutting between the dots that I show you here in just a second. If we flip it around, we see one crop mark here and one crop mark here. We're going to make a cut from one to the other. We see a crop mark here and one here. Let's make that cut now. Once we've made that cut, we're going to gently press and that's going to drop right in that slot there inside the former. And what that does is that gives us some exhaust detail. Once I've got that pushed in, I'm going to run a bead of glue where the skin meets the former. While the glue is cooling down, I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure from the outside to make sure that stays in place. Once the glue cools, We'll do the same thing on the other side. Once that's done, locate your four flaps. Let's add just a little bit of shape to each of these. It won't take much. You can see that I'm just using my fingertips. Once we've added the shape, you'll notice that one edge is flat and one edge is curved. We're going to line this curved edge up right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of glue here and then we're going to add just a little bit of glue right along this corner. I'm trying to keep the glue away from the paper on the curved edge and I'm running glue right on the corner of the straight edge. I want to try to shingle over the fuselage skin and I'll press and hold that in place. While it's cooling down, I'm going to test fit my next piece. 
That fit looks good. I'm going to add glue the same way. Again, on the curved edge, I want to keep the glue away from the paper. And on the straight edge, I want to run it right on the corner's edge. I'll hold that in place for about a minute. Then I'm going to flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. Once all your flaps are in place, let's take a look at the canopy. Now I kept the scrap around for a reason. You'll notice that I've got my markings T3, T4, T2, and T1 all on the same side. Just like we did with the fuselage, I want to make sure that I always have everything oriented correctly. T2 was too small to put a number on. So I put a little bitty mark on there so you'll know which side is which. All right, so I've got numbers all on one side and in the case of the T2, I've got a little marking just so we know that everything is pointing the right direction. Let's begin by adding some shape to the part labeled T4. We're only going to be adding shape right down the middle. The sides are going to stay really flat. The front glass of the Hellcat is pretty flat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bevel over here on one side and the other. There we go. Once I get my bevel added, I'm going to fold it back and that'll give me the front canopy shape. I'm going to bring my two edges together. We're going to add a bead of glue. Anytime I'm bringing parts together, the part that does not have glue needs to shingle over the part that does have glue. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to add another bead of glue and bring my two edges together. Let that cool down and then we'll work on our next two pieces. Once that's had a chance to cool down, let's add some shape to the part labeled T3. T3 is going to drop in just like this. To get a little bit better fit, let's take and bevel all the edges. I'm getting my razor blade as close to the paper as I possibly can. When I'm doing my test fit, the paper from T3 is slightly shingling over the part labeled T4. That looks good. I'm going to apply a bead of glue here, here, and here. Give the glue plenty of time to cool. For our last piece, we're going to add shape just like we did on the previous piece. And I know for a fact we're going to have to add a bevel. This one's a little bit tricky. Be very careful that you don't cut your fingers. Once you get your bevel cut, we're going to drop that piece in and it should fill that gap nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash it into place and I'm going to flip the whole assembly over and I'm just going to squirt some glue in there. I'm going to flip it back over and push that piece down. Give the glue a chance to cool. Then we're going to test fit the canopy to the fuselage. So when we do a test fit between the canopy and the fuselage, you'll see that there is a big, huge gap. What we're going to do is we're going to add a bevel all the way around the edge so it'll fit up to the fuselage a little snugger. 
To do that, I'm simply going to take my razor blade, cut a very shallow bevel. Now that I've got my bevel cut, let's check the fit. That looks a lot better. Now that I'm happy with the fit, I'm going to hold the canopy in place. And using a razor blade, I'm going to run around the edge of the canopy and create a score in the fuselage. Do the same on the other side. Once I've created a score, I'm going to run a bead of glue just above the score. I'm also going to run a bead of glue right along the skin. Once that's done, I'm going to put the canopy back in place, being careful to line it up exactly to the scores I made. And we're going to pinch it down and hold it in place. Once a canopy's been glued in place, we're going to test fit the wing assembly into the fuselage. Let's begin by fitting the back of the wing into the fuselage. And we're going to push it back, and it looks like it's wanting to stop there. If we look at the front of the aircraft, we're going to notice that we're a little bit too wide right here. I'm going to pull the assembly out, and we're going to trim a little bit of material on either side. Using a razor blade, I'm simply going to remove a little bit of material from the front here. Do the same on the other side. All right, once that's done, let's reinsert the wing and make sure my wires are out of the way. And it looks like my wings drop right in. Flip the assembly upside down and our fit looks really good. All right, now that we're happy with our fit, let's pull our wing assembly out one more time. We're gonna apply a heavy bead of glue on top of this former and along the spline. I'm going to hold down pressure until the glue's had a chance to cool. Let's add a bead of glue where the spline meets the electronics box. All right, once that's been done, we're going to run a bead of glue where the upper wing skin meets the fuselage. Now we're going to run a bead of glue between the upper wing skin and the fuselage. You'll notice that I'm applying pressure with my thumb right in the center. If you remember, we've got a spline running all the way down, so this is a really good place to apply pressure. I'm going to be drawing the wing up to the fuselage with my pointer finger, and I'm going to apply a bead of glue right along the seam here. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. If you get a little excess glue, you can always use a piece of scrap to wipe it away. Once our wing's been glued in place, we're going to run a pair of pushrod housings. To do that, I'm simply going to feed the pushrod housing down one side, and when it becomes visible in the pill-shaped cutout, I'm going to catch it using a pushrod. And once I've caught the pushrod housing, I'm going to run it out the pill-shaped slot. You can see that it's sticking out about an eighth of an inch. Once it's poking through, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to keep it in place. We'll give that a couple minutes to cool down. Then we're going to flip the aircraft over and run a pushrod housing down the other side of the spline through the other pill-shaped hole. Give the glue a couple minutes to cool down, then we're going to trim our pushrod housings. 
I'm going to cut the push rod housings about an inch past this edge. Once I've got my push rod housings cut, we're going to slide our F3 former into place. You'll see that the step down is going to be pointing towards the nose of the aircraft. I'm going to slide the former in. You'll notice that there are still two layers of foam sticking out. Once we're happy with our test fit, I'm going to pull the former out just slightly. I'm going to add a bead of glue to the number three former and we're going to push it back into place. You can see where I'm pushing down right there in the middle. Give this a couple minutes to cool down and then we're going to install our push rods. To install the push rod, I'm first going to remove one of the arms off the servo. Next, I'm going to run the Z-bend through the innermost hole on the servo arm. Now I can feed the push rod into the push rod housing and I'm going to put the servo arm back in the same spot. Once that's done, I'm going to add my screw and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once that's done, let's go ahead and add a piece of Velcro. You can see that I've got my aircraft upside down. I'm simply going to run the Velcro through the opening in the XM mount. Let's go ahead and install the motors and connect our servos. For motor installation, be sure and check out the motor install video located in this playlist. For servo setup, check out the second half of the servo install and setup video also located inside this playlist. We are really close to being done with this build. I've saved back the accessory cover. You may have already peeled the paper off and removed the foam. I intentionally saved this piece to last. I wanted to go through and do a quick review here at the end. I feel like the more times you see symbol mapping demonstrated, the more you're going to remember it and the less you're going to need to rely on videos. So if we take a look at our symbols here, we see that we're going to be peeling paper away. We see that we're going to be removing foam. This is a new symbol that I want to show you and I want to do it right here at the end. Anytime you see a circle with a hashtag, we are going to be adding some magnets. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and peel the paper and remove the foam. Barbecue skewer works great for this one. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and pop these circles out. Now that we've got the foam cleaned out of both of those cavities, let's go ahead and do a test fit with our magnets. Your kit will include four magnets. You're gonna break them into stacks of two. What we want is whenever we glue the magnets in place, we're gonna want one magnet just above the surface of the foam, like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill one of the cavities with glue. When inserting magnets, it's very important that one magnet is just above the surface of the skin. Once that's done, let's do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you really hold this second stack of magnets in place while the glue cools down. It may want to pull out and join the other stack. Whenever we glue the magnets in place, we're going to glue the X down first. My accessory cover is going to fit on like this. The crop mark here in the center is going to be lined up with the center line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue right down here on the first former. I'm going to grab my first magnet and I'm going to drop it right in the glue. I'm going to add a bead of glue here on the other side and glue my second magnet. Notice that the X is going down and we'll let the glue cool down. 
So as we take a look at the underside of our aircraft, you'll see that we've got a very angular shape here at the back. But if we look to the front of the aircraft, this former is pretty round. So we need to transition from a squared off fit here in the back to a rounded fit here in the front. And what we've done is we've cut these reliefs, one on the right and one on the left. That's gonna help us to give us that square shape in the back. So let's add some shape here in the front because we definitely want it a little more rounded up front. And go back just a little bit. So you can see when I pinch the sides together, we've got that angular shape in the rear and up front, we've got that rounded shape. Let's do a quick test fit. You'll notice that we've got slots on either side of the wings. We're gonna drop those tabs into the slots and we're gonna push down. Now you'll notice that we've got a lip here. So we're gonna start removing a little bit of material. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and add a bevel to each of these edges. Once we've added the bevel, let's do another test fit. I'm gonna drop my tabs into the slots. And that looks a lot better. That matches up really good. Now you can see that I've got a little bit of bowing right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the cover back off. We're gonna flip it over. And we're gonna be gluing two barbecue skewers in place. What I'm going to do is you can see a dotted line right here at the leading edge. We're going to be running the barbecue skewer just beside that dotted line. Here in the back, we're running it just above this tab. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the barbecue skewer, I'm going to put it on the tabletop, push down using a razor blade, and I'm going to roll the barbecue skewer back and forth. Then I can easily break it off. I'm gonna put my barbecue skewer back in place and I need to leave about a half inch there at the back. That way the barbecue skewer won't make contact with the former. All right, once I got that, I'm gonna run a bead of glue. And I'm gonna hold my barbecue skewer in place for a minute or so. Once glue's cooled down, let's do the same thing on the other side. Give the glue plenty of time to cool down, then we're gonna do our test fit once again. One thing I wanna do before we do a test fit, I wanna add glue to both of these cutouts. I really want this to hold its shape. Once I've added glue, I'm gonna take and bend the edges up, and I'm gonna hold this in place while the glue cools. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're gonna do one more test fit. I'm gonna run the pointed edge of the barbecue skewers into the formers. and the back should snap closed. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a squeeze and we're gonna drop the tabs into the slots. Okay, our fit looks good. I'm gonna pull it back out. I'm gonna add a little tab right here that'll make removing the cover a little bit easier. To make a pull tab, I'm simply gonna take a piece of clear tape I prefer the Gorilla Tape, it's a little bit heavier duty. And I'm gonna fold it over where I've got about a third of the sticky surface still showing. Next, I'm gonna make a cut here. And I'm gonna make a cut here. So this is my sticky side and it's the widest. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna push it straight down there. And when our accessory cover is installed, we'll have a little pull tab to help break the magnets loose. Okay. 
Once our accessory cover has been installed, we just have to finish out the nose of the aircraft. To finish out the nose of the aircraft, we first need to add a bevel to the skin labeled C1. I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to add a bevel all the way around. I want to get my razor blade as close to the paper as I can without actually cutting the paper. Once I've got my bevel cut, we're going to add some shape. When adding shape, it's very important that you always maintain a 90 degree angle between the tabletop and the part itself. So my edges come together. There's not a whole lot of spring, so I think I got it. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm gonna match up the crop mark in the center with the crop mark in the center here on the fuselage. Once we bring the two edges together and we're happy with our test fit, now we can start gluing it in place. The first bead of glue I'm gonna add is only gonna be about an inch and a half long. The side that does not have glue will slightly shingle over the side that does have glue. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to continue to work our way around. It looks like my fit is really good the rest of the way. I'm going to add a bead of glue all the way along the edge of the skin. And I'm going to bring my two edges together. Once that's done, let's do the same thing on the other side. So when I bring these two edges together, it looks like I've got a little bit of interference. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of material from one side. I'm gonna try that again. All right, that looks a lot better. You'll notice that I did not add any glue right here. We're gonna do that in just a minute. To glue the two edges together, once I have a seam that I'm really happy with, I'll first run a piece of tape across the outside. Once that's done, I'm gonna shoot a bead of glue from the inside between the two edges. I'm gonna use a piece of scrap to remove any excess and we'll let that cool down for just a minute. We only have two parts left, we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is add a little bit of detail to the front end of the aircraft. We're first gonna add a bead of glue to this piece with the two legs sticking down. Once that's done, we're gonna glue this piece in place and we're gonna let that cool down for just a minute. Next, we're gonna need to add a little bevel on each of the legs. All right, once that's done, we're gonna do a test fit. We're gonna drop the legs in first and we're gonna rotate this in place. And you can see that we've got quite a bit of interference. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna remove a little bit of foam all the way around. To do that, I'm simply gonna run my razor blade straight in and just remove a little bit of foam all the way around. Once the foam's been removed, we're gonna to try to fit our piece in one more time. And there we go. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue over here. Doesn't take much to hold this in place. Once that's done, let's go ahead and remove the tape. 
once you've got all your tape removed, your aircraft is ready for your receiver and transmitter setup. This will be covered in another video located in this playlist. With that done, let's go ahead and take a look at our horizontal stabilizer. To check to make sure that the horizontal stabilizer is parallel to the main wing, simply look at it from the back of the aircraft. From this angle, everything looks good. I'm simply going to run a bead of glue down either side. We'll let the glue cool down and then we'll get the prop installed. When doing your prop install, make sure that you've got a counterclockwise prop. Keep in mind that your aircraft has a modified thrust angle added to the propeller. When you look at the propeller from the top, it's going to be canted slightly to the right. Whenever you're looking at it from the side, it's going to be canted slightly downward. Once your prop's been snugged down, your aircraft is ready to fly. I hope you had fun building your aircraft. Now the real fun begins. It's time to get out and fly. 